You are listening to the INCJ podcast, conversations about international criminal justice. Uh, hello, everyone. It's it's so nice to see you um, uh, in this uh, wonderful uh, digital uh, office or meeting space. Um, our aim today is to talk about uh, the criminal justice system in Estonia and how we uh, treat uh, the young uh, people that come into contact with the criminal justice system and how we aim to uh, make the system as child friendly as possible and in a way to support uh, the development of young people in a way that they hopefully never come into contact with the criminal justice system again. Uh, but before we get started, uh, before we delve into the conversation, uh, I think it's uh, a good idea to get to know each other. Uh, and I'll start with myself. My name is Laidi Surva. I work in the uh, criminal, policy, criminal Policy Department in the Ministry of Justice in Estonia. And one of the topics that I work on is uh, juvenile justice uh, reform. And I have been working on this topic for the last three, four years. And I've already seen quite quite many developments, uh, which I hope to share with you all today, and and also get some insights from you uh, to show uh, how these developments have come into your work. Um, but then let's get to know uh, uh, all of you, and let's start with uh, Annika. Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Annika Vanantom. I'm a prosecutor. Uh, in the northern part of the Estonia, uh, in the capital of the country. Uh, and I deal with uh, young people who are um, in victims and also who are perpetrators. So uh, young people all around. Thank you. Uh, then Alexander. Yes, hello. My name is Alexander. Mm, I'm working in the Department of Education of Tallinn. My work is so-called mobile youth work, and the aim of this job is to reach kids outside in the streets where they are and to make contact to mm, global maybe aim is to like prevention, but we never know with whom we will meet in the street. So one part is just to observe, to make contact, and then to go into individual level and then try to help them solve their problems, issues in their life. Uh, thank you, very good. Um, then Helarin. Hey, my name is uh, Helarin Malpa. I work at the Social Insurance Board of Estonia and I am a restorative justice coordinator. I mainly work with uh, volunteers who offer conflict mediation and um, yeah, that's it. I think we will know uh, or l learn more about what to do with uh, with juveniles and, and restorative justice. And then last yeah. but not least, uh, Margarita. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Margarita Ingel uh, and I'm a police officer and uh, I'm developing restorative justice uh, methods and uh, non-punitive methods uh, in police and mainly for kids, teens, uh, but also uh, for adults. Excellent. Um, so already I think we see that the, the work that you do um, deals a lot with uh, uh, juveniles, uh, both at risk and also uh, um, sort of um, regular youth who we meet on the streets. And, and I think it's also uh, a fair point to think about uh, young people in, in a way that they, uh, they are not, uh, they don't have a sign of criminal on their foreheads because they are all just young people that we, uh, we work with. Uh, and maybe just to start off our uh, discussion today, um, the, the Ministry of Justice, I think a year ago now, we uh, 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 made a study or uh, sort of bought some research uh, done with uh, young people. 
uh, especially with young people who've been in contact with the criminal system. So they were either um, uh, accused of a crime or they were committed, uh, they, they were uh, sort of, they had committed a crime. They were possibly some of them already under probation or also in, uh, in a closed youth institution. And the, the reason that we, uh, we contacted the, these young people was to actually find out um, how do they see or how do they experience the, the services and uh, sort of the, the people who work you know, in, the, in the justice system. And then some of the things that um, we asked them about is um, like if they wanted to uh, describe uh, a good specialist, like how would that person look like? Uh, and one of the things that they brought out is that uh, a good specialist uh, never uh, stigmatizes a person. So you don't look at the young person as just uh, a criminal or someone who's committed a crime or someone who's in risk of crime, but you take them, as, as the young people say, it, you take them as a normal person. Uh, and then also a good specialist is, is someone who who understands that uh, being in a criminal criminal proceeding is very stressful, uh, also for young people. And then a good specialist knows how to take that into account. So they, they find ways of how to support a person going through criminal proceedings and then sort of trying to take some of the anxiety down. Uh, and then they also said that a good specialist is uh, firm but friendly. So. Uh, 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 young people, they often say that it's, it's the best specialists are the ones that are very uh, concrete. They, they specify what they mean and want, but in a way they're also friendly and, and supportive. Uh, and they, they try to understand the young person, not only look at the crime, uh, but also uh, the person himself or herself. So uh, maybe to start off our, our conversation, like how do you see that uh, what what the young people have said about good specialists. Um, how do you see that in your work? Or how do you try and make uh, a young person comfortable uh, when you work uh, with them? So who wants to start? Well, I can start maybe because uh, uh, to be the first one is always a bit easier. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I agree with all those um, description. Uh, you mentioned and um, for me it is always very important to to keep a kind of um, uh, to be equal with the um, with the young people not uh, to uh, start with um, uh, you know forced position or from uh, up to down and uh, to see uh, a human uh, inside uh, this person uh, with uh, with his needs and uh, feelings and thoughts and uh, this is uh, the way how how I connect to young people and um, uh, it is very important to be um, to to, um, to do it sincerely and uh, with open heart because um, Kids and young people and uh, people, adult also, um, they feel if uh, if you do it uh, with the with your heart or just uh, you you must do some part of your work. Yeah, that's excellent, uh, Alexander. Yes, uh, I also agree with Margarita. I, I remember the words of one professor. Howard Williams from uh, England who said uh, he's a youth worker and he said that kids has a so-called inbuilt bullshit detector like if you do it uh, uh, not uh, with your heart then they will automatically you know like perm 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 they see it and uh, I agree that all this uh, acceptance and empathy uh, works the same in, in the streets and uh, when I work in the streets uh, then the first thing is like we're working without um, so-called, let's say, 
expectations that they will change or something that uh, because adult world mostly expects something from kids like uh, Parents ex- expect that they would be nice kids. Uh, police also expect that they would uh, behave properly. And everyone like has some expectation from them. And when you approach to kids, to to actually to anyone with with this attitude, like, but what what do you want? What, what's your point? Like, what is your? Uh, how does you see your life? Uh, then this open these gates of uh, trust. And uh, this is how I think it should be. And I it think does, it's really, yeah. it, it also doesn't matter like I, uh, if you are a youth worker or if you're or your teacher or your policeman. I think it's it's all the same because when we are in this uh, uniform, uh, for me it's a little bit maybe easier as a youth worker because uh, I'm on the same level. But when you're in the uniform, it, it like of a policeman, Margarita maybe can comment on that. It will uh, it could be more. Uh, stressful already for them because they have some kind of um, experience maybe and maybe negative experience with with that already so you need to melt this ice that you can trust me and with how, how you can do this with this approach like that i'm here for you not against you basically mm-hmm. i agree with this uh, uniform uh comment because uh, really um anytime uh, i can come and uh, speak with uh, people without uniform, I do this. Uh, but actually, I noticed that uh, it's also very important how do you communicate, even if you're not with uh, uniform. Because if you uh, uniform, uh, your uniform is inside you, then uh, there is no difference. So this is uh, very important uh, how you behave. And um, I think that Sometimes for police officers, it is very difficult to uh, to come out from this um, police officer role and not to be so official and just um, speak like simple human. Uh, so this is uh, something I uh, for sure learned from Alexander. Uh, and um, it's really this... Um, the way he's working um, is very in- inspiring for me. But now when, when we move forward from uh, uniforms, I like I mean police can be scary sometimes. I don't I don't think that in Estonia people are, or young people uh, are afraid of the police. I think we've done a huge amount of work to actually get that trust. But when we move even like sort of further, when we talk about prosecution, I think Prosecutors are people who undeservedly, I would say, are feared. Uh, so how do you, Annika, sort of get get, it, get this good contact with young people to get that trust? Um, yes, uh, they fear us. <laughs> it's, it's true. They usually come to me. They, I, I can see their anxiety. I can see their, their sometimes fear in their eyes and... Uh, uh, usually I start that uh, I explain the rules that it's uh, okay to pause, it's okay to ask me questions, uh, it's uh, it's okay to say that uh, I don't understand. I explain it all and then I explain that um, please tell me what, uh, what do you need uh, because you are the main character of your own life. Uh, we are just visitors. Uh, I'm a visitor only a short, for a short period. And uh, if I start to um, um, talk like that, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not talking like uh, official, if I'm not uh, using uh, very difficult words, if I just uh, softly try to explain, then uh, it's usually they um, they not any any more anxious. anxious. They um, uh, for, for firstly they. Um, just look at me with big eyes, mm-hmm. prosecutor uh, talking like that. Um, uh, it's crazy person. <laughs> but uh, in the end, they understand me. In the end, they uh, they start to talk with me. In the end, uh, they uh, trust me more. 
And sometimes uh, they ask me a question, then it's not a, uh, anything to do with this um, case. And, uh, and um, sometimes they um, come back uh, to us that they want to practice law, they want to uh, go to school to law. And sometimes uh, yesterday I, it was... Um, this young boy who came, I, I could see that uh, he didn't sleep at night. I could see that uh, he feared. And when I asked, uh, what did you, what, what do you fear? Uh, what do you thought at home? Uh, what would happen today? And uh, he said um, the biggest fear was that he would uh, have to go to court and he would have to go to prison. That's the main uh, Main fear, they have to go to court and, and prison. Prosecutor equals prison. And when I explain that it's, it's no, no, at, um, not at first, we have to wait a little in the, the prison time, <laughs> maybe we'll come later, not, not today. And then I could see he uh, uh, relaxed and uh, could speak with me more. Uh, and uh, when I explained uh, what, what my idea was uh, for a resolution or um, uh, solution for this case, uh, then I could see his um, uh, relaxation and, and he um, uh, no longer feared me. So um, it's a long way, still a long way to um, uh, teach that the prosecutor's, prosecutor's office is um, not equals prison. Yeah, luckily they uh, they don't all go to prison. Um, and actually, that that led me to uh, a question for uh, Helarin, because I know that you and and your team you you work very closely with uh, the police and the prosecutor's office, and and a lot of the cases are referred to you for the restorative uh, services. So maybe you can uh, say a few words about uh, sort of what type of youngsters uh, uh, approach you, and then how do you uh, how do you deal with the, the cases that are sent to you? And then maybe what have you learned from the young people that, that you work with? Uh, yeah, um, we got really um, a lot of different uh, cases, as you said, from prosecutors, police officer. Also, we got cases from, from schools, local uh, governments. And um, I would say recently, like a big part of them are cases uh, where has been used um, physical um, they, it ha has been physical um, incidents conflicts but what we really often see is that if a case is uh, sent to us there's like one person who hurt another for example but there's always a story behind so uh, i'm the one who has to put them for example to excel and a lot of times i i have to stop read again think so who was the um, offender and who was the victim so because it's it's never almost never one or on one um so yeah um Recently, when I talk about uh, cases that don't come from, from um, police or prosecutors are the cases that are taking part in, in schools. And in those cases, there's a lot of, um, let's say, nagging and, and using uh, bad words uh, with each other. But there's always the same story behind. It's never that uh, there's one bad boy and uh, another one is uh, good. There are always uh, reasons and uh, and longer stories um, behind. But um, I was also thinking about um, uh, the previous question. I myself have also done some mediations and we have lots of volunteers who are doing them almost uh, daily. And what is important in mediation, but it's also important in, in talking to youngsters is that you have to create that uh, safe uh, environment for them. You have to be equal, as uh, Margarita said, like no labeling. You are talking like to person to person. And uh, I think the goal is that you're listening to them. You're listening, listening without uh, labels. Yeah, I'm not sure if I answered your question now, but. 
but I actually I really liked what you said last that listening without labels and I think that's uh, uh, I think that takes a lot also from the specialist when we go back to what uh, I think Margarita said in the beginning that you don't want to take sort of a, a power position you want to talk to you know a person who is sort of a person like yourself you know you you, you don't go with any prejudice sometimes it's difficult but you try to be as as open up as possible and I know like all of you have uh, you've had you're not old people but you've had years of experience with working uh, with young people uh, like if you now reflect back on your work life do you notice any change uh, like in the in the specialists but also do you notice any change in in the young people that we work with I don't know Margarita you can start Excuse me, I'm dealing with some technical problems uh, with this uh, computer. Can can you please uh, repeat the question? Yeah, like d during your your work years, have you noticed any sort of change in the specialists, uh, like how we deal with young people? But also, have you have you noticed any any change in the young people that we uh, work with? Of course, uh, I think it would be a very sad situation if. Uh, uh, if uh, if I uh, could notice any change uh, in specialist, of course uh, I um, uh, I do notice, and um, uh, I'm very grateful for uh, for restorative justice that came uh, into our life uh, in uh, in police in uh, uh, everywhere actually for now. So um, it changed the um, set of minds of a lot of people. And I really do believe that this is uh, the, um, the, the big future um, uh, in, our, in our country and society. And, um, and youngsters uh, also, they are more open. Uh, and um, I think that really the... Um, um, the role of uh, police officers are also changed. So uh, the way we are contacting to people, the way we're working with them uh, also um, influences them. And, um, and now I think that um, uh, children and uh, young people um, uh, ask, ask for, for help and, uh, and they, um, they speak more than maybe uh, some years ago. I want to catch over. Uh, I think, like, I, can I speak yes? <laughs> yes, no, speak now, we'll keep silence. Uh, um, I wanted to say that uh, about specialists, that uh, working together with police, like this uh, seven years back, I think it was a little, maybe even much harder. And sometimes when we had cooperation, like uh, meetings together, like youth workers and some other specialists together with police, I remember we were accusing each other of not doing something, you know, and why youth workers don't do this? Like, and why police don't do this? And this is your job. No, this is your job. Like you're not paying enough attention, blah, 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 all this, you know? And I think that this is like a space jump that we made during those seven years, in, in, at least in some districts that we are literally speaking the same language and we understand the needs of youth the same. It's not like, we are concur like in concurrence with each other, but we are in cooperation. And this is what is really like uh, needed, I think, not only in specialists, but in system, this systematic change. And like Margarita said, that this is the set of mind that we could see the needs and, and the, of, of youth and uh, understanding those needs equally, we can move together towards this like aim or this what, what they need better like society I, I, something like this and so this was about specialists and about youth i think something that changed during last i think 10 years maybe uh that you became more from one hand sensitive and uh, not only youth but society all in all um like 
even in the level of jokes, you know, if it was maybe 10 years ago, some racist joke or some nationalistic joke was more or less appropriate. Uh, and now uh, kids would say like, no, this is like, this is bad. This is discrimination or something like those words, like abuse, like abusive uh, relationships. And they're much more aware about their uh, rights and much more caring about their personal space, about this uh, bullying, for example, all those things are on the surface now. Because if I look back on my, chi my childhood, like there was bullying all over the place. Like I, I, I was bullying, I was bullied, but no, but it was like, yeah, this is the part of life. You need to become hard because when you will grow up, then you know, <laughs> no matter how hard you hit, like the life hits harder. So you need to just uh, adopt to it. And this is like life is as it is. Now it's not like this. Now I like kids could say like, no, I need, I need help or this behavior is not right. Or my parents are not... Mm, correct in their behavior so i need protection from my family and this is i think also a big leap you know, in in this that they would understand that they have their rights also i think this is important i think it's really good that you mentioned family because i was thinking like we uh like we've talked about the specialists now and also the young people but how or when or if the, their families come into play like what's the role of the the parents or the guardians of the, the the children and young people that you work with like how do they come into the picture i don't know annika maybe you want to comment uh yes parents uh, my favorite topic <laughs> kids and their parents um I don't know, is, is it nice to say, but I think uh, kids are sometimes smarter than their parents. Uh, kids, uh, children, uh, young people, usually deep down they know what, what the problem is, deep down they know uh, what the solution might be. They may not know the right words for it. They may not know uh, how uh, to get to that uh, solution. But they usually uh, know it's something is wrong, something needs to change. Uh, and the parents, uh, it's, it's, it's okay to, um, they have to um, uh, protect their children, they have to uh, keep them safe. Uh, and uh, when they come to me, uh, kids with their parents, uh, they usually, they, they, feel that they have to protect their kids from me because I'm the <laughs> bad guy in that situation. And uh, usually I uh, ask the parents uh, that, uh, yeah, yeah, you are the emotional support and let's uh, listen to their kids. Let's listen to this uh, young person uh, who is a main character of their life, what uh, he or she needs. And uh, sometimes if the, if the young person is brave enough, uh, they will say this in front of the parents. Sometimes I will have to ask the parents to leave the room and they uh, speak to this uh, young person privately and then uh, we come back uh, to the room all together. But, uh, at, but in this moment, uh, the parents have to listen to the child they have to uh, listen where, where the problem is uh, and they have to listen to that, that there are a solution and the solution might not uh, be the one the parents like. Uh, but um, yeah, parents and their kids, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a very long, <laughs> long, long topic. <laughs> And I think Hellerin also had a comment, like, I, I noticed you raised your hands when we mentioned parents. Yeah, uh, when Alexander was talking about uh, bullying in the past, I just remembered a recent um, mediation when we had a pre-meeting with a youngster and his father. And his father said that uh, when he went to school, they were bullying as well. And like, no one called to the police and you have to like, get used to it and it's normal you cannot always call to someone and like 
for this meeting. I have taken off several days uh, from work and like uh, I have other meetings because of my uh, youngster. And when we had the meeting together, he was talking the same story. He had to take off uh, days from work to come here. And but he uh, yeah, he was only uh, justify yeah yeah exactly yeah, justifying uh basically uh, what was happening uh, at school but didn't see the bigger picture uh and this is what we have seen several times you have the youngster there telling their story and then the parent gets to say talk about their story and then you realize that it's exactly the same the youngster has learned everything from home uh yeah yeah, Alexander. Yeah, I would like to add that uh, very often I hear something like this that from parents, like I had the same mm -hmm, experience, but I grown up normal. And then you're like, no, you're not normal. These things that you think that is normal is not actually, you know, like and the same person is hitting his kid or something and like, yeah, but I'm like, I grown up. Okay, no, you have a lot of issues that you're, you're not even aware and you uh, continue give like superimpose the, the same like stereotypes, the same issues to your, to your kid. It's like very funny. And sometimes you, you see also, again, it's not nice about maybe parents, but it is like this. You see a person, like a kid that you don't like, maybe he's a little bit, I don't know, not comfortable, something with you. you maybe sometimes, maybe you think, how could this person, how could this kid be so stupid, you know? Okay, sometimes something that crossed to my mind sometimes. And then I meet their parents and they think, oh, actually in these circumstances, he's okay. Like he's still like, you know, okay, comparing to his parents. So this is like, again, I, I think all specialists think that working with parents is the, sometimes the hardest thing. Yeah, Margarita. Well, yes. Um, I also see that parents are a um, big challenge, uh, very uh, usually. Uh, but uh, I think that it's very important to not to um, to go in confrontation with the parents because uh, parents and family uh, almost always uh, is the biggest resource for uh, children. And uh, we have to make clear that actually we have uh, the same purpose with parents. We, we are here to to help. Uh, kid to to help uh, their children, and uh, we we have to to act like uh, partners. So this will bring the result and uh, uh, the best solution for for children. Yeah, and I, I agree that it's also uh, we can't erase the parents, and oftentimes, um, like you. You can do only so much as a specialist, like either a police officer or, or a child protection specialist or even a mediator. You only meet the, that person or the young person for, I don't know, an hour, two hours. But you know that the, the actual life is elsewhere. So, you know, and then you need to also understand how that affects the behavior of that young person. And of course, we can't sort of, I think... We can't fix all the families, uh, and I think I think it's a a problem or a, a challenge that you know we we need to think about and also sort of prevent. So try try and uh, build our systems in a way like starting from kindergartens that that children who who have uh, weaker homes or not that much support and love at home that they at least experience that. Uh, in school, in kindergartens, in uh, you know, with their friends. Uh, but this is something that the criminal justice system maybe can't reach. And maybe it's also a good thing that we can't always don't go uh, fix the you know family matters with the police. Uh, but I, I think like we looking back at all the developments we've had, um, we've made um, extremely good changes in trying to actually understand young people and trying to find ways to actually uh, sort of evaluate the, the risks and then the sort of, but also strengths that, that they have in their in their lives. 
we, we've really sort of um, multiplied different cooperation networks. We're really built on collaboration and trained our people to actually sort of understand and see the risks and then tr take that into account in our work. But so we've done a lot to actually be better in terms of children and young people. But actually, my question is to you, I think to all of you, if you could change one thing in, in the way that the criminal justice system works with young people or, or many things, like what would be the first thing that you would uh, change? Or where do you see that we still have uh, issues to deal with? Like what is the, the thing that if you had all the money in the world and all the time in the world, all the power in the world, what would you change? This is a very hard question, uh, but the first thing that came up to my mind is that uh, we need more time, uh, more time uh, to offer to youngsters. Uh, first of all, uh, the specialists uh, need time to uh, get time uh, and offer time uh, to uh, go through all the necessary steps and uh, stages and um, uh, to implement, for example, restorative justice, you you need uh, uh, much more time. Uh, uh, for example, um, uh, and and uh, sometimes or very often, I feel and I see that uh, we don't we are in hurry all the time, and uh, we have to do things quickly, but it doesn't work like this. And uh, youngsters needs time and. Uh, and actually, also a time in this meaning that we have to be patient, because also all these um, changes are not coming with one meeting, with one uh, situation, or one day. Uh, time and patience, I think this is the main keyword for me right now. I think that those are sort of... Uh, these are, I mean, I, I agree with you. This is, is time and, and attention is something that we uh, we should uh, offer. Uh, sometimes it's difficult, like as, we, as you say, that we are always in a hurry. Uh, but I sometimes think that we, uh, not always, but often we, uh, we don't have time to do things properly, but we always find time to do things again. So if we, if we actually, the first time we did it right, we maybe shouldn't, or we, do, we wouldn't need to do it the, the second time. So yeah, time is, is, I think, one of the key issues. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agree, because uh, sometimes uh, it feels like if we do it quickly and 100 times, it's like better than uh, do it once, but very for a very, very long uh, uh, and proper way. Uh, and uh, maybe this is, uh, yeah. The, the thing we have to change in our minds. What other ideas? I have one. I think that it's already changing, but um, I think that every specialist uh, person working with children should, um, instead of seeing, let's say, a bad child, a the troublesome uh, child, should see uh, him, her as a person in need. And like, this should be the first change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I think that's also a big mindset change, like we we discussed before. It that actually you look at things different, uh, so it's not easy, but I think it's it's doable. Yeah, Alexander. Yes, I think the. And there was an answer in your question, you know, like if I would have all money and all resources in the world, then <laughs> first of all, I would like, it would be nice to make uh, the profession of a policeman, of a youth worker also more attractive to people who want to do this job, like financially, first of all, because I see a lot of specialists like in the youth work field, I don't know, I see in police, in police also, uh, young, bright minds come to work and then they see there is no mm, maybe financial development or support or like way to bring their ideas to life. And they look to some something to something else, uh, 
and then we lose the specialist. And if we say, speak about making connection and building trust relationship with kids, it's all about, uh, and with people all in all, it's all about this personal connection also, I mean, it's very important that uh, if I'm working on the field, that I'm working with the same like person, for example, and for some time, if Margarita say that it takes time, but if uh, specialists are changing, it's not like uh, this person, this kid would have connection with me, but it doesn't matter that it, it doesn't mean that he would have the same connection with another like uh, specialist. So I just cannot transfer him. Okay, tomorrow you will deal with this guy. And the day after tomorrow, you will do deal with this guy, this, this trust, like ruins. And also, um, in the way of the second point is cooperation, which is actually connected. Also, like here in Tallinn, we can see that like how um, structures they between each other. I mean, like different. But for example, Department of Education and uh, Police, how they cooperate with each other. Uh, but still, it's very much on the impersonal uh, level. For example, I know Margarita and I trust her and with her I have good connection and we can da, 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 da. and if I work for five years in the same place and Margarita work in the same so da, 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 I mean like make connection <laughs> like uh, professional connection. So then, then it's much easier when you know people you know, and when all people are changing then this flow of system is very hard to you know to give forward this this experience and yeah so i mean very pragmatic but money is one of this uh this maybe not only money but to make this profession more attractive to young specialists yeah i think it's it's also it's key and it's uh, you know we we need to value the people that we work with as well as the people that we work uh, for i mean it's the you know the uh, like as you say, it's not all about the money, but money helps. Like if if we only you know promise things in words, but we don't deliver, uh, then you know our words become empty. Uh, and then what we see is, I think also, like you said, that we we get some really good people working in the system, but we burn them out because you know there's there's a lot of work, and then oftentimes there's not enough reward for the work, or we just. And then it's sometimes they, uh, I think the expectations are really high. I mean, they need to be high because, you, you know, you want the best for the young people. But I think maybe sometimes the expectations are uh, not realistic. And then sort of we also lose good people because of that. But I think if we had more res resources, some of that worry would, would go away. Well, Annika, what, what are your thoughts? Um. Yeah, I started to think about it. Yeah, it's uh, the time and the money and the mindset. It's um, um, and we we it, it's true. We don't um, value the people who are working in the field, who are working with uh, young people who are trying to um, make their lives better, make their our future better. And uh, yeah, if I if I speak on my um, personal experience, then it's true. Sometimes I feel that uh, I'm not valued. I I have worked uh, in this uh, field um, approximately, I think, ten years or something like that. And uh, usually my co-workers uh, see me as, oh, this is a soft place, it's a soft work, uh, you don't do that much, you just uh, talk with kids and that's it. And then I usually I think about, it, uh, okay, you think you, I just talk to the kids, so try, let's, uh, le I find this kid who wants to talk with you, uh, try to talk with these kids, try to find out uh, what his or her problems are, what the solution are. Let's, let's try this. Nobody wants this. Nobody wants my job. <laughs> but everybody thinks it's uh, very easy. Uh, it's not very easy. It needs a uh, lot of my um, energy. It needs a lot of knowledge. Uh, I think that uh, if I had um, all the res resources, I would give... Um, uh, plus time, plus money, I would give knowledge. Yeah, and I think these are really wise words to uh, 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 sort of 
I think also end our conversation. Uh, it's uh, at least for me, um, you really gave me food for thought uh, and I, your insights uh, on on the developments in Estonia, but also I think more globally, like in dealing with uh, young people uh, in general. I think there's a, there's a lot to think about, and and I think one of the words that are like the main words that that I've gone through our conversation today is actually, you know, actually being connected, having this connection to people, because that's like uh, that's where the the magic happens, like in in conversation with people. Uh, and then the other word that actually. Uh, was mentioned many times that, and it builds on uh, this connection is trust. So actually, you know, people, be they old or young, they don't open up, they don't trust you without you actually giving them real sincere attention, without you listening to them, without you uh, trying to understand them. Yes, there are some things that are uh, not easy or not even possible to... Uh, sort of uh, agree with but we we should all have the patience and the energy and the time to understand people because without understanding there's not much we can do uh, i think that's what I, what I took from from our conversation today and i i hope that you uh, you have enjoyed our conversation as much as i did and i want to thank you all for your time uh, and I hope together with our colleagues, we will be able to make the criminal justice system more child friendly. And then maybe in a perfect world, uh, we wouldn't have young people uh, in, in our system. But only if, if, if only as volunteers helping the police or the youth workers or the mediators, uh, only as our friends, not as our clients. So, so thank you all. and. Uh, Let's uh, change the world together. You have been listening to the INCJ podcast, conversations about international criminal justice. To find out more, go to our website at criminaljusticenetwork.net or follow us on Twitter at INTCJ Network.